Okay, this is the first solution for exercise one from session four. Before we start to work on this uh, exercise, the first thing we need to do is to take a look at the uh, design itself. Um, a little bit more complicated than the previous sketch we've uh, looked at, and we need to concentrate on what are the basic elements of this particular design. Um, most designs have a base feature around here, which is where we'll start, and then we can identify three other features that will sit on the top surface, and we'll create a sketch for each one of those, followed by an extrusion. Um, the order that you do these three in doesn't really matter, uh, but you should have a plan to work to. Okay, so let's put that to one side, and we'll begin our design. Uh, first thing we do, of course, is produce an extrusion, then into the sketch tool, and the bottom piece of this design is sitting on the floor, so we'll choose this plane here and say OK. If you press the shift button and press the middle mouse button, we can move the default date and coordinate system out of the way and we're ready to start drawing. And as before, we'll just work around with the sketch tool and just drop the shape in there. So that's the core sketch finished. Um, first thing we need to do is have a look at the constraints and see how they're looking. Uh, we've got a strange 90 degree angle in here and that's appearing because we don't have a horizontal rule across there. So switch on the constraints tool, pick off the line, and let's make that horizontal. Um, we we'll probably need to make sure that these two lines are of equal length. And I'd also like to make sure this always remains in the middle. So I can pick up the centre point there, pick up this line here, and then use the midpoint option on there. Uh, now I think we're in good shape to actually work with the dimensions. Um, so we can look at the overall length, which is 96. This height here is going to be 32. And depth of this little pocket here is 20 to the, the centre of the circle. And finally to drop a radius in there, which is 8 millimetres. OK, that's our shape uh, completed. I'll just double check that it's uh, as we wish it to be. And I've just spotted an error here. This dimension is not correct. Um, so I can delete it. Let's move these out of the way so we can see what's happening. Um, this dimension should be positioned to the centre of this arc, um, which is to the original design constraint. So let's go from there to there. Drop that, and it's that value that should be 32. And that looks a much better shape. OK, at this point we can finish the sketch and let it extrude up to get some thickness, which for this particular one is going to be 16. It's OK. And fit. Um, next thing we want to do is put the piece on the end here that's got the big arc. And I'd like to sketch on the back face. So I'm just going to rotate the model. So we've got that face in view. I can go to into my extrude tool here. I'm going to sort of go onto that vertical face. Now, although the sketch is attached to this edge here, I'm actually, actually going to sketch on that edge. It's a lot easier if you sketch away from the, from the edge and attach it later. So, a nice simple shape is this one. So, we just uh, start over here somewhere, draw a line across, a line up, a short line across, and a big arc coming down here. Okay, and we can start now to, to work with the dimensions. Oh, so we've got constraints on there, so let's go to dimensions. And onto there, and we know we want that to be 48. Let's just fit the screen so we can see all of the, uh, all the shape. And I've got dimension here that's uh, 63. 
Uh, but in theory, we could take that and that length there and just make those equal, uh, which just saves me typing in the uh, 62 radius there. Um, the other thing I know from the uh, design is um, that this this feature up here is going to be 20. Or alternatively, I could edit this to be 48. So take the constraints off and edit that out. OK, so that gives an implied distance of uh, 16 across there. The only thing I need to do is to now attach my sketch to the, the rest of the model. And um, we can use that from constraints. And we can use collinear, which basically says that line is in line with that line. And then use collinear again to say that line is in line with that line. And then collinear. OK, that sketch is now fully constrained. So I can finish sketch. Reverse the direction, and we can have a look at the distance that should be extruded out. And I believe that is, uh, is 16, so which is already there. Have a quick preview. And look at this; it looks like that that piece is not joined to that. Um, so the by default the unite function hasn't been applied. So I need to click on here and do it manually. Okay, we're now ready to put the next piece in here. So I need to rotate the model around to that side. And we can again select the extrude tool onto that face. And just push it out of the way. And let's just quickly drop that sketch in. And it is in fact very similar to the, uh, the first sketch that we created. I just need, need to make sure I'm using my quadrant point here so the, the line comes out in the right direction and then close off that uh, that profile okay let's have a look a closer look at this and as with the first sketch we can make sure this is symmetrical by taking the center point to the arc that line I'm going to use midpoint and we've got two values for height here and we could fix that by making those equal length OK, again, we look like we're down to a sensible set of dimensions now. And we need to check out the values. I think that is showing the correct value of 8, but we should still check it so it goes to that blue colour. That should be 12. And the height of this whole model is 28. OK, and then finally, as with the previous sketch, we need to attach it into this corner. Can use exactly the same method. Use collinear from there to there, so it just lines up those two edges, and likewise for these two. And to finish sketch. Okay, rotate my model, and I can see it's going the wrong direction. Uh, so I'll just reverse the direction, and let's have a look at the thickness here. Um, from the drawing, that is coming out 42 millimeters. Make sure we've got the Unite function on, and say OK. And just have a quick look at the model. And then the final section is just to put that little uh, triangular section at the bottom. Fairly straightforward. So again, the final sketch. Uh, we'll just create ourselves a triangular piece across here. Again, it's far easier to sort of pull your sketch away from the sort of main model so you're in control of where the sketch actually attaches rather than using the, the automated system to let that happen. Okay, such a simple sketch. Um, we only need to really sort of play around with the, the dimensional values. Um, and that one's going to be 28. And I think this length should be 40. And then rotate the model around so we can do the positioning part. Again, constraints, use a collinear just to drag that sketch right into those corners. Finish the sketch to allow us to finish off the extrude. And again, reverse the direction, and we're looking for this to be 12 millimeters. And 
hit OK. And that is that design complete. Um, you should always take a look around your model to make sure that it looks right. It's easy to make a type of mistake, and particularly where we've got lots of good information on the original. We need to have a look at that uh, that nice 3D shape there, and have a look at that. And from we can start, we can see that that's uh, that's working really nicely. And that concludes this exercise.